Hi everyone, this is a mini lesson on dividing files into three parts and also creating and using make files. Uh, I would like to point out that a lot of this material that is covered in the video is given in your software engineering overview document where you will find the property tax example and then there's a big section on make files. Um, so I will be using that exact uh, same property tax ex uh, functions example and you are welcome to keep your document with you as you watch this video. As you may recall, uh, uh, the example was to calculate property tax based off of home income values, right? So you, the user is expected to enter uh, home values and your program is expected to calculate uh, property tax, which is prede predetermined at 1.2%, right? So I'm going to go into all this example and the solution is there in the document. I'm just going to go over that. So here is where the three file division actually starts. You have the solution is divided into three parts. The first part is the calculate property tax main where your main method, which is your integer main, your main C++ method is right here, right? And here is the only function that you're expected to use, which is calculate property tax. And if you notice here, there is a big header and this is all about how to do your documentation and stuff. So this is the description of what your application does. The main program has a single call to calculate property tax. If you notice here, it says in include calculate, calculate property tax header. Now this calculate property tax header is where we should actually find the header file for calculate property tax. So let's go there. And if you look at this calculate property tax header, this contains the prototypes just the function headers of all the functions that your application is going to be using. Notice that this does not contain any function definition. It just has a single function header, right, and followed by semicolons. So if you include this file, then it's just the same as though you put all the function prototypes in one single file on top of your main program and then you went ahead use those functions and then you define the functions later, right? So splitting it into three files is a convenient way for putting all your function headers in one place and that's what we have done. Now I'm going to go to the next file which is calculate property tax functions. When you look at calculate property tax functions, you see a whole ton of function definitions. These are all functions that have been declared in your calculate property tax header, right? So again, the header file contains just a single line function header, which are called the function prototypes. And then the functions file contains the definition. So you see calculate property tax, the, the function that we used in our main program is actually defined here and so all the functions that we have used. When you see these single line comments, they explain what this function does and what it returns. So this is how I would expect you to divide the files into three parts. Now, <clears throat> now the thing is when you have divided your program into multiple um, units like this, how do you compile your program? Previously, if you were using Visual Studio, or if you were using any other IDE, you would just click compile and it would compile. But when you do this on the server, on the Linux server, it's not going to compile unless you give it a whole series of compile commands or you put all of these compile commands together in a together into a file which is called the make file. Make is a Linux utility which allows you to put a whole bunch of compile commands together and run it like a script and it will execute all of those commands one by one for you. So that's the first um, feature of the make file. The second feature of the make file is that the, the make utility, it senses whenever 
a file has gotten edited. So for example, if you change something in your calculate property tax main and then it would sense that this file has gotten changed and it would go and when next time you ran make it would look at the dates and uh, and then it would determine which file has changed since the last time the compilation was done and go ahead and compile only that file. That makes the compilation process super efficient, especially if when you become a large scale application developer and you are and, and you are working on 20, 30, 100 files, then definitely you do not want to be recompiling all of these files every single time you want to do a compilation, right? And it also allows a whole ton of programmers to develop programs and then pool all those programs together and then use one common make file to compile everything into one executable unit. The question though is, how are we going to create the make file? And I'm just going to go over that a little bit. Um, <clears throat> let me open this note file. So the first thing I'd like to say is that you need to create this make file using notepad. Uh, you cannot use Microsoft Doc, <coughs> excuse me, because that will not work on the server. It has to be a text file. Now the make file contains the compilation commands and it also contains the relationship or, de or dependencies between all of these files, right? So I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way to the top. The, this, the bottom most command is G++, which is the compiler for on the Linux server. G++ minus C and display banner.cpp and display banner.h. My solution has a, has a display banner and this was just to show to you that we can have a program with multiple header files and multiple function files, right? So <clears throat> the minus C option says do not link my programs together but just compile them and create an object file. Object files are binary files, right, which cannot be run standalone. They have to be joined together into one program, into an executable file for them to actually make your program run. So minus C says do the compilations. The output of this is going to be a file called displaybanner.o, which is the object file. Let's move on to this one. This program says, this method says that that shows the dependencies between the display, this actually should have been display banner, display banner.o, the object file that's created here, depends on the display banner.cpp and display banner header.h. So now we have created a link for the make file. So that just to make it easy for the make file to know what are the dependencies for this file. So it knows if you change display banner.h, then it needs to recreate a new display banner.o. Right? All right, so let's move up a little more. And here we've got G minus C calculate property functions and calculate property tax header together. The reason for doing that is you will not be able to compile calculate property tax functions without the header. You, you do need to have the header file in all, uh, because you've included it and so it's going to drag all of this stuff from here into here, right, and compile them together. And it will create a ob, uh, um, uh, an object file called calculate property tax functions dot o. And then you come up to the uh, upper level and you see that calculate property tax functions dot o, which is the output of this, depends on calculate property tax functions and calculate property tax header which are these files. So every compilation file has got on top of it a dependency or a relationship line which tells you how the object file is related to the source file. And then let's move on further and then we have the compilation of the main program with the header. Right Now uh, and then the main program the object file depends on 
calculate property tax main and calculate property tax header dot h so here's the relationship now comes and if you notice all of these are minus c minus c and minus c which means do only the compilation do not link them together because my compilation is not finished i do not have all the object files that i need to connect them together into an executable so when i when you come here you can see that i have a g++ but i do not have a minus c and this takes the object file from here the object file from here the object file from here and connects all of them together and says generate an output executable file and call it calculate property tax right now when you do that right when you do this then you see what you're saying here is that this calculate property tax is has a relationship or is built out of the main object file the functions object file and the banner object file notice the dot o dot o and dot o here and then you come here and say all these files right are the target the final target file is calculate properties tax and that's the one that's going to be the executable another thing that i'd like you to notice is that the space here is actually tabs and your make file will not work if you have spaces you need to have tabs here right so now i'm just going to save this file and i'm going to go on to putty and show you how this actually works so i'm going to connect to my putty and and i'm going to go to cisp360 because that's my file for you guys and you see I've got a directory called property tax I'm going to go to property tax and go here and I'm going to remove all the object files and if you can see I've got and I'm going to remove calculate property tax because I had just run that before making this video and now you see I've got my make file I've got all my CPP files and my header files. Ignore this rmstar.h.gch. So those files are gone. I have my header files and I have my make file. Right? And all I need to do is I say make, run this. And you see it's running all my G commands minus C, minus C, minus C. And then it's combining all of those files into an executable file called calculate property tags if i do ls here then i've got my object files i've got my and i've got my executable file now i'm going to do chmod u plus um, x right calculate property tax i'm going to make this an executable file and now you could you could do chmod 777 but that's not a very secure way of doing it and then i do dot slash calculate property tax and now my program is running and i can enter a home value between 250000 let's say i do 300000 and i actually get a value here do i have another home value i say lowercase yes that should work and then i'm going to just give it some non-acceptable value and it said this is an invalid home value do you have another home value I'm going to say yes I do I'm going to make this like a very large value and then oh I did I did not say I gave an invalid value so then this kind of um, didn't like that and said that's an invalid entry it's neither yes or no and any invalid entry is going to take as a no and it's going to exit the program I can just run this program again by pressing the up arrow on my keyboard run this again and say I would like to give a invalid value here it did not like it yes I have one more I'm going to say 300,000 300,000 gives a value another home value and I enter no and the program exits right and so I can exit out of my putty 
and um, and I'm done. So this is how uh, the reason why we divide files into three parts uh, so that you can have a team of engineers working, you have a separation of concerns and and then how you can build a make file that does all your compilation for you in one easy step and also makes your compilation process super efficient.